wasn't planning to add a third part to my discussion of the individual and society, but um, for the new year I did a E. King reading and um, it brought up issues which I felt were relevant, so I thought I would describe that. First, uh, my attitude to the E. King. For me, I use it as my most serious oracle. So in other words, I use it very seldom. And I tend to do the full dress business with kowtowing and incense and yarrow stalks and all that. For more informal things, I use the tarot. Now, I don't go the whole hog and um, have my copy of the King you know, wrapped in silk and placed on a high shelf and all that sort of business because um, it just, over the years, it hasn't been practical in my various moves. And also, uh, it's not as though I've got a sort of very sacred antiquarian um, copy of it. I'm using the ordinary Wilhelm translation in two volumes. And so um, I treat it with respect, but not with reverence. I began as a teenager collecting yarrow stalks um, and walking through the fields finding yarrow and cutting it and drying it and until I got the right number of sticks and I thought I'd just try it out and um, the hexagram I got the outstanding message from it is is better to wait till you've got a question to ask so I took that as a, quite a warning. This is not something to be played around with. It's a thing to be taken seriously when you really need to use it. And that is partly why I've um, treated it with such respect. Now, the way it works for me quite often is that um, when there's a big something which is really concerning me, worrying me, it presents it in a new light which almost amounts to a solution. In other words, it gives me a new way of looking at the subject. And from that, often a solution develops. As a good example of that, um, in the 90s, when I was uh, getting to know my future wife, Lynn, I was spending a lot of time at her house in London, whereas I lived in Gloucestershire in the deep country. And so, uh, as the months passed, I was beginning to feel very um, uneasy, frustrated. And it was because my life had been now suddenly split into two. I used to be have a home in Gloucestershire where I lived most of the time. And now I was spending just about every weekend going up to London. And it was tearing me down the middle, you know, um, all the sort of household things I used to do in the weekend. I was away and the place was getting run down and I was feeling frustrated. When I threw the E King, the message that came out was all about the king travelling around his kingdom. And I realised I'd been thinking of my home as just being in Gloucestershire. And so anything that took me away from that was taking me away from my kingdom, if you like. Um, to other places and it was a distraction was actually this taught me that wherever I've been to a place I relate to in a sense becomes part of my kingdom it is part of my world and so in spending so much time in London I was really was extending my kingdom all the way from Gloucestershire to London and so I no longer was seeing it as my life being torn up by having to be in another place rather me journeying to other parts of my kingdom and of course coming to Cape Town was a further extension of that and that's been very helpful to me in coping with being in different places. Now the present problem I had was that this last year 2015 has been very hard for me because early on I had a fall an accident and operations uh, which left me limping and I haven't been totally cured. Now, on reaching 70, that was quite a harsh uh, maturing process 
to find out I've become an old man, a crippled old man. And um, in that context, I was finding my workload was heavy. I was having too many things to do. And for example, the one of the nice things that happened this year was the discovery of you know making these videos and posting them and getting a response and everything. And um, that was great, I don't regret it. But it did mean that suddenly I was having to look at um, Facebook and make posts and respond to them and, and notice things and getting messages on Facebook and on YouTube and messages on YouTube and um, more statistics to look at, more things to cope with. So there were more and more demands on my time on top of everything else, the garden, the house, um, my writing, uh, my earning a living. And I just wasn't coping. It was hard going. And so the question I wanted to put was along the lines of what is wrong with me? Now that sounds a very negative question to put, but basically I didn't need to be told that life was difficult and that I had a lot to cope with and that new media are um, adding to the burden of communication and so on. I didn't need to be told that. What I wanted to know is what could I do internally to handle this better? What was wrong with me in the sense that what could I do better to cope with this? And the answer I got was a pretty consistent one because I got the uh, 45 changing to 8. And both of those are very strongly about assembling, integrating, bringing together into harmony. And um, this told me something about the way I was tackling these problems. And I'm going to use the internal external analogy as I did before when I talk about um, the democracy, you know, finding the many parts of oneself and treating them as if it was a democracy rather than a dictatorship. Now my problem was equivalent to something that happens that goes wrong in an outer democracy when usually when there's a economic problems or economic failure you get for example the police force saying or the army saying we need much more funding we can't cope and when that happens then other people say the same the teachers say we need more funding we're struggling the health services say we need more funding we're struggling social services and so on and basically all these different groups are reaching out to government and say give us more and in that sense they're all competing because if a lot is given to the army then there isn't that much left for education and so on now that in a sense was what was happening with me i had all these different demands in my life all these different things i was trying to do all these different inner voices if you like i want to write i want to earn a living, I want to do gardening, I want to keep fit, so on and so forth. And they're all begging me for more. And the currency wasn't money, of course, it was time, more time. And they all wanted more time than I had in the day. Now, this assembling coming together, one way this could happen in the outer world is if instead of um, and it's usually, this is easier to manage on a smaller local scale. I'll just give an example. If instead of um, all saying, we want more, we want more, we want more, and trying to compete with the others, if, let us say, the police, the teachers, the um, healthcare people, and perhaps the social workers, all to get, got together and met, and said that we have certain common interests in having a harmonious, fit, healthy society, well-educated, um, but we're competing. What can we do if we work together to um, make things better? For example, the police might say, one of the things we know which is um, putting extra pressure on the teachers is the problem of truancy. Now, we're out on the streets all the time. Surely if we could help you with that, it would give you more 
spare time. And then you can help us because we depend on the educational people to tell young people about our role and you know how best to help the peace, please to keep peace and so on and so forth. And similarly with the um, educational, uh, with the social workers and with the hospital people, they could say one of the biggest strains on you is the huge pressure of an accident emergency on Friday, Saturday nights with a lot of drunkards on the streets. Here again is something where we might be able to work with you to help to reduce that burden to um, make less that. Now, I don't, this is only me guesswork, but you see the idea. It's a question of getting the parts and working together. And this really was the message I was getting what I should do internally. In other words, instead of thinking of all these separate things, how I could blend them to some extent. And one of the things I found is that if I went to gym um, before breakfast and had a quick session, I actually was much better at sitting still and working through the day than if I didn't do that and was um, all day fidgeting and, and, and feeling that I, I needed exercise and I couldn't stand sitting for so long at the desk. It's a question of getting the two things sort of working together towards a common aim. And um, so that uh, is the sort of solution that was being suggested to me and I'm working on. Now, it was interesting because, of course, I had just explained to you the thing of um, seeing yourself not as a single soul, a unit, but the advantages of seeing those separate parts of yourself. In other words, taking yourself apart and allowing all those different voices to speak. Whereas this exercise seems to be about bringing them back together again. But it isn't a unifying thing in that sense of just going backwards. It's rather more like the alchemical solve et coagula, where you break a thing into its constituent parts in order to perfect them and then bring them back together as a more perfect whole. It's something more like that. And also, um, I like this way that polarities change from layer to layer. It rings true, and there are many examples of it. Um, there's the Jungian thing of, you know, that um, that which is male on the outside will have a female soul, and that female soul will have a male spirit, and so on, down the sort of layers of the onion, alternating polarities. And that's very like the um, model of the hexagram, and the alternating lines, and the alternating polarities. And similarly, in um, the horoscope, the alternating polarities as you go around. And so the idea of sort of um, separating and then bringing together, separating and bringing together, rings true to me as an approach to life, a valid thing to, be, to do. So, say this is just a personal example, but it sort of shows both um, the way I sometimes work with divination and also the way one continues to work with one's inner self. <laughs>